The Speedy B 30x30 V4 is here. This is gonna be a quick overview of this new release and all the new features that come out while maintaining an ultra low price. Do you want to get two builds up or one really expensive build? And there's certain scenarios where you may wanna do both. If you want to go out and fly, having two instead of one premium is always better because you never know when you're gonna crash hard and you don't wanna to have to go all the way home without getting your fly time in. So. One of the changes is the change over to the ICM gyro from the BMI 27. Now I've had decent experience with both of these. Betaflight developers are now accommodating for both of these. I would say that's about a break even. I don't think that's necessarily an upgrade, but I don't think it's a downgrade either. They have increased the surge protection though for that gyro by 320% by swapping to some nicer components. That is an upgrade. The BEX on board, both the five volt and the nine volt have been cranked up to three amp from two amp. So upgrades on both of those across the board for the flight controller. iNav support has been added. So you're one of those return to home junkies. Now you're gonna be feeling much, much better. But if you're a beta flight user, this Speedy B release, like all the other Speedy Bs, has the Bluetooth chip enabled, allowing you to connect wirelessly to Speedy B app and make changes to your beta flight configuration in the field without any wires, doing it from the phone app, which is extremely handy. That's something that my $140 setup does not have compatibility with, and this one does for half the price. In fact, if I want to make a change to my beta flight setup in the field, I have to use a USB cable like a caveman. They have added a giant heat sync to the electronic speed controller and bumped the amp rating up to 55 amps or 70 amp burst for all four corners on here. That is an essential upgrade. Now this, while much beefier, also adds an ounce of weight. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. And if you compare to a premium ESC, you can see that they both use the larger size FETs around the outside. The Foxer uses large size FETs throughout the entire thing, while this uses a combination of larger and smaller FETs. So if I had to trust it maximum percent, I would spend the $140, but for most builds, if you're not crashing and bash, you can go ahead and build two for the price of one by going with the Speedy B kit. On the flight controller, it retains Speedy B's black box access, but there is an upgrade there. Whereas before you had to use only certain types of SD cards for this, you can use pretty much all for this new version of the V4 flight controller. It does have the latest USB-C port on there. It has Speedy B's signature four LED strip, which is double the amount of the regular flight controller two LED setup. And these are larger and much brighter on there. In addition to that, there is an extra six pin harness, which is wired directly for plug and play access with the DJI O3 unit. Ever since the DJI 3 O3 unit came out, I have been rarely ever using a GoPro because it can do 4K 60 or 2.7K at 100 FPS. That's meaning my needs the majority of the time. This means you can get a build going up with this with so much less soldering, it's mind blowing. You just plug it into this thing, very easy to take in and out. Now, if you do wanna use the older DJI air unit from the previous generation. There's also plug and play access with that with an included wiring harness. They got you covered whether you're on old gen or next gen. You can also wire this up manually to use HD zero, walk snail or analog. The other cool thing is on the four corners of the flight controller, there is wiring access to be able to wire up individual LED controllers. So in addition to the four LEDs on the board itself, you could wire four addressable strips of LEDs to have a color change on your build. And that's just one step easier. Instead of having to wire four sets of wires to a single set of three pads, you have an individual set of pads for each corner, addressable LEDs on each arm of your drone. This is a really nice feature if you plan to do that. In addition to the nice size FETs on there, they've also added a TVS diode for extra voltage spike protection. A lot of the nicer, more premium electronic speed controllers started coming out with this the last couple of years, and it's nice to see that it's trickled down even to 
the budget options like SpeedyB. So if you're not needing the absolute tip of the top, if you have a budget that doesn't allow you to cross that $500 threshold and you want to get much closer down to three or $400 for even a DJI O3 build, this is going to be a critical option. Now, this is an overview. I'm not going to have enough time to build it up and do long-term testing before the release date of this video. In the comments, if you like this type of content, see these sneak previews as things are about to come out. Let me know what product you like us to cover here on the channel. Next, ever since the chip shortage, the cost of drone electronics have went through the roof to the moon. And so if you want to get off the ground and have a couple of backups, you may not always be shopping for the most expensive, best electronics out there. Just a disclaimer, I personally use the Fox Ear Reaper stack, but just the electronic speed controller there is going to cost more than this entire set of electronics. In fact, the total cost for mine is going to be about $140. Whereas for this complete set of flight controllers plus electronic speed controller with a full list of upgraded features is only going to cost you $69.99. 69 dudes! <gasps> for the pre-order price available in the link in the description below. So I'm relying on the community to share your experiences with the Speedy B V3 electronic sets. We're not gonna go all the way back to V1 because as I understand, they did have some quality control issues with the first batch, but that's been a few years. Why are you bringing up old shit? My understanding, seeing the feedback in the community, is that the V2 improved some. The V3 were pretty much guaranteed fresh, so we're expecting the same from the V4. Of course, some people are always going to have some disappointments. After all, these are hobby-grade electronics and not professionally things manufactured by Sony, Microsoft, or Apple. And so you can expect some rate of failures even on the premium stuff. Overall, we're looking for acceptable rates of survivability for a budget price so it's kind of nice that we have the options at the lower end as well as at the higher end what do you think in the comments guys do you prefer to spend maximum amounts to keep your build running for the maximum amount of time do you like to build for 150 dollars per remember back in the day when you could get a premium set of electronics for like 90 bucks those days are gone so now the budget is 70 for a budget entry stack. They've made significant upgrades to the point where you can get quite a bit more features on this budget stack than I even get on my premium stack. 